Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Bible study. I am Pastor Amanda. I am the youth pastor here. And tonight, we're just going to share a very simple teaching that is beneficial to everybody, but it's also going to be used for our online growth track as well for anybody that's a new believer trying to join in and um, see what it is that we as Christians do on a regular basis. But I would like to encourage you, if you're watching live, um, just be, you know, commenting in the comment section. You know, Pastor Daniel will be getting back with you guys on that kind of stuff. Um, if there's any feedback, anything that you would like to ask us as staff, just please let us know and we'll be happy to get with you. But before we get started, let's pray and then we're going to jump right into God's word. Tell you, Father, thank you so much for being an amazing and awesome God. Thank you for the fact that you love us. Thank you for your word that you've given us. Thank you for the written words that we read every day, um, that we can look and be inspired, God. But also thank you for your Holy Spirit that speaks into our lives on a regular basis, even when we're in places like Walmart or Dairy Queen. And, and God, we know that you're a good God and you're always with us and you're always speaking to us. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about a very simple concept, the Bible. <laughs> and so I want to go over some quick little statistics that might be shocking to some people. So let me read them to you. According to the American Bible Society, 87% of U.S. households own a Bible. And the average household has three copies. However, this is the sad part. More than half of Americans have read little to none of the Bible. Let that sink in for a second. We as Americans have access to one of the greatest forces of God's written language. And we can talk to him, we can learn from him, and yet we barely tap into it. Now listen to this. On the opposite end of the spectrum in the U.S., 90% of the households have a TV and 95% of the households have a computer. So in 2023, Americans spent an average of 12 hours a day consuming media through TV, through their computers, through their smartphones, even newspapers and magazines, those still exist. But they were spending over 12 hours a day consuming media Whereas when you look at their consumption of the Bible, the average American spends less than 30 minutes a day reading the Bible. Crazy. God's word, alive and well and active right here at our fingertips. And yet we're more consumed by the things that we see on a screen than we are in God's word. Now, ironically, you're watching this on a screen. And so don't be mis don't be um, confused because we want you to grow in Bible study and we want to be able to connect. Screens are a great opportunity and online communities are a great opportunity to grow in the fellowship of, of Christianity. But the truth of the matter is we need to have our own personal growth at home reading God's word. And what's even crazier to me is that in America, where the Bible is so easily accessible, and of course, like we can go and buy it in any translation just about that we want, you know, there's still 52 countries in the world where the Bible is on the banned book list. And it's illegal for you to own a Bible. It's illegal for you to be caught reading the Bible. And most of those are in the Muslim countries. But here in America, we have so many freedoms and we have so many liberties and yet we take it for granted. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up, my grandmothers, my grandmothers, like it, I guess it was some American tradition to have a giant, and I'm talking about like a 25 pound, maybe 50 pound Bible sitting on the coffee table and it was in King James version. And there was like your family name, you know, monogrammed on it. And it was always on the coffee table or underneath the coffee table, like on display, but you couldn't touch it. Right. And it was there. And like every good American Christian family had one. Well, when Daniel and I got married in 2006, we were gifted a Bible, very much like that. It was white, had gold trim, a big old picture of Jesus on the front, and it had our names written on it, uh, monogrammed. I can't even tell you where that Bible is, right? And I will say that we, I think, take for granted sometimes putting out for show, look at ours, look at our family, we have the Word of God, and yet we look at the statistic that, you know, we're not even looking at the Word of God on a regular basis, but... I think this, the point 
of having God's word in front of us daily still is valid. And I think we need to, as a family, especially in our today's society, you know, really take the point that like, we need the Bible in front of us on a regular basis, but we need to be actually reading it, not just having it on display, collecting dust and then forbidding the grandchildren from touching it. Um, but when we look at the Bible, like it has so much to offer. Now, if you've never looked at the Bible and I work with teenagers and I've actually had to sit down and explain in very simple form, like how to, to look at the Bible, you know, there's 66 books in the Bible. There are 39 in the old Testament and there are 27 in the new Testament. And when we look at the Bible, there are at least 40 different authors that wrote up those 66 books. And, um, there's probably more, but 40 that we can name that wrote up these books. And these, these books that we call them, you know, we've got the Pentateuch, which is the very beginning, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Judges, and get into all the, the Kings, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, you know, and then you got Psalms and Proverbs, and then you got the minor prophets like Obadiah and Jonah, poor guys always get left out. Then you, you know, you have this period of, of time that happens that we don't really have any um, new written um, books of the Bible, but then you got the New Testament and it starts with Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Then we go into Acts and then we go into Romans and then first and second Corinthians. And then we get into all of the epistles or letters that Paul wrote. And so when I'm working with teenagers and I'm like, okay, turn to your Bible to Romans chapter three, they're all like, what? And so I, especially our unchurched students that I deal with, I'm having to like really show them how to look at the Bible, how to read the Bible, like where to find these things. And it's interesting to me because like, and I get this all the time. If you really were to look at the Bible and how it was originally written, you know, it was written on parchment paper. It wasn't broken up into chapters. It wasn't broken up into verses. Over time, we have done that to make it just easier for us to, to be able to go back and find things and, and to be able to notate things. But it wasn't originally written that way. Um, as an Assembly of God minister, and if you are Assembly of God, um, or if you're part of the Assembly of God fellowship, then our number one fundamental truth is that scriptures are inspired. And I want to read to you word for word what it says. It says the scriptures, both the Old and New Testaments, are verbally inspired of God and are the revelation of God to man, the infallible authoritative rule of faith and conduct. And if you were to go to ag.org and you go to the statement of fundamental beliefs, then you, of course, you would see all 16 of the fundamental truths. And then this is number one, and there's several scriptures, but the key scriptures that we use is found in second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. Verse 17, love this. God uses it using his word to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So we look at 2 Timothy, and that is like our core verse. Now, there are other verses that we could talk about. 2 Peter 1, um, verse 21, uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, 2, 13. There are other verses that we can pull out of the Bible that talks about God's word being inspired. And what I really do like, if you read, I think it's in 2 Peter, if you will, turn with me there to 2 Peter. And it actually talks about how, um, let's see, 2 Peter, that's 1 Peter Second Peter 2, 1. And this is where Peter is writing. And he says in verse 20 and 21, it says, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture ever came from the prophets themselves or their own understanding or from human um, initiative. Okay. Verse 21, it says, uh, sorry. Yes. Verse 21, it says, no, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. So when we're looking at God's word and we can sit here and we can say 66 Bibles and, and we can go, oh my gosh, that's a lot. And we can look at the fact that like it's written and there's all these questions about like, you know, what translations do we read? And, and, um, there might be, everybody has their favorite translation. Okay. Um, I will say that I have my favorites, the assemblies of God, they stand by the new living translation. They stay by that as the translation that we would use in like all of our careers 
curriculum. So for instance, when I do teen Bible quiz or junior Bible quiz is what we do with elementary age students. Teen Bible quiz is with middle and high school. Um, all of the curriculum, all the questions, when they do memorization, it's all coming out of the New Living Translation. Um, and it's a great Bible. And so this Bible here that I was just reading from was NLT. And it is, this particular Bible is my note-taking Bible. I bought it a couple years ago and it's, it's kind of hard to see, but there's like all these um, margins on the side where I can, I can notate it. And I'm going through it strategically. I've been trying to do a chronological reading plan. Admittedly, haven't been like it's been more than a year, right? And I'm like highlighting certain things, certain colors, and I'm trying to make it very like see the patterns throughout the Bible. Because here's what you need to understand: even though it's 66 books, even though there's over 40 authors, it's still one story. It's still God's story and His redemptive story. It talks about His creation in Genesis, and that talks about how we come back to Him in Revelation. It's one story. So the Bible is, it's like I said, one whole story. And what's really awesome is though we are not adding any more to the Bible, there's not going to be 72 books of the Bible, you know, in 2050 or anything like that. The Bible, it, it's, it's done being added like as a book, it's done. But what's neat is we are still part of God's story, right? Because the prophecies in God's word, God speaking to those who wrote the Bible, God speaking to them and the prophecies of like the end times, especially now with everything going on, people like to really, you know, get into end time prophecies, but like we are a part of God's story. And that's just something that we can really take to heart. And I can tell you right now that when I'm in my personal reading time, like I actually have a couple Bibles in front of me. So I have, you know, my note taking Bible, which has been my current thing for the last couple of years in front of me. But then I also have what I like is the fire Bible. Now this is a Bible that we um, get from gospel publishing house and we get it and we are able to give it to students. And I make sure every single student that comes through my youth group has a fire Bible. This Bible is a Pentecost Bible in the sense that all the notes in it and everything in it, um, is for believers who, um, that want to have God's word, like really come to life and it helps them to study it. So I'll have my note taking Bible, right? And then I'll have this Bible beside me. And so when I'm reading the scriptures, I'll turn to the same scriptures in this Bible and I'll look at the notes that they have written in here and I'll write those notes or take things over from here into my note taking Bible. Also, it's really cool about my note taking Bible that it came with an app. So like I can scan um, the page number that I'm on and I, in the app and it'll pull up all of their notes and all of their research and everything that goes along with their word study of, you know, what the Greek word is here and how many times is it used. And it's a pretty neat thing that really allows you to get into some in-depth study. But if you just want to read the Bible, pick a translation that works for you. I'll tell you as a teenager, you know, NIV, of course, was like the big thing back then. Um, my youth pastor gifted me this Bible upon graduation. And if you can see, it has seen some, de some days, like it is all tore up and that's just because it's been used a lot and it's actually God's word translation. And so I use this Bible for a reading Bible for years and I've had it since 2006. So I've had it for 18 years. Um, and you can see like where I have, you know, scratched my notes in it and I've got, you know, pages of, of different like, you know, ideas and things that I've had when I was, you know, in college and so forth. But in high school, I had a different Bible that I carried around with me, right? So I enjoy this Bible. I love this Bible. Then in 2019, I got ordained. No, I'm sorry, 2020. 2020, I got ordained. And I'm like, I really can't be taking like this Bible that's all ratted up, which actually probably has more meaning if I did uh, for pictures. So what I ended up doing is buying a new, fresh, clean Bible. Uh, but this one's NIV. And of course, I didn't think anything about buying NIV versus NLT versus ESV, whatever. But ultimately, I was just trying to have a Bible that was clean and small and slick and nice for pictures, right? Um, and these are just a few of the Bibles that I have, right? And I want you to understand when we're reading God's word for our personal growth, what I personally say every time I'm reading God's word, I'm like, God, speak to me today. God, 
you know, show me something new. Yes, I went to college. Yes, I have, you know, I took all the different classes, Old Testament survey, New Testament survey. I took, you know, the epistles. I took the life of Jesus and I took Acts. I took all those Bible classes. Um, but the truth of the matter is like sometimes we get caught up in dissecting the Bible, if you will, that we lose sight of the fact that this is a love letter from God. God is speaking to us every day using his word. And I love it when I'm looking at his word and I'm reading it. And it's something that I might have read a hundred times. And because I just said that simple prayer, God, show me something new. Like God literally shows me something new and you should see my notes. They're so funny, but like, I'll sit there and like, you could see my what, like, are you serious? Like written down because in all honesty, it's me on God having a moment, having a conversation, if you will, things that I never noticed before really just jump off the page. And I feel like sometimes God uses those moments as teaching moments for me and the life that I'm in and so forth. Um, I will tell you that when you are reading your Bible, if you want to learn more, Right now, media is a resource that our church provides. We as a church have paid for this resource. You just have to go online and, um, you know, sign up and you can have Pastor Daniel or Pastor Scott help you with that. Um, but there's an amazing kids program under the kids section. It's called What's in the Bible by Phil Vischer. Okay. It's an amazing, amazing program that though it's made with puppets and it's cute, it's got songs. It does a phenomenal job of explaining what's in the Bible. How many of you know VeggieTales, right? We, most of us know VeggieTales. Phil Vischer created VeggieTales. And of course, later in life, he has created what's in the Bible and some other great kids programs. But I'm telling you, what's in the Bible is an amazing resource. I wish I could show it all the time in youth because it's, I mean, as a parent and as an adult, I still learn a lot from what's in the Bible. And I will tell you with Christmas coming up, I know right now, those watching Watching live, we have just entered November. We will not be skipping Thanksgiving. Please celebrate Thanksgiving before you celebrate Christmas. But um, if you're watching this in the Grove Track, I don't know when you're watching it, but at Christmas time, they have an amazing program by what's in the Bible that talks about, you know, the origins of Christmas and how like Christians and it should respond to Christmas and different things. It's great. It's an amazing program. I really do want to encourage you guys to go and check it out. Um, but get yourself on a Bible reading plan. You know, the, the Bible app, which is put out by, you know, new version. And it literally says the Bible. It's a little Brown little Bible app. You could download it from, you know, an Android or Apple device and get on it. There's so many reading plans on there that you can have and go through. Like there's the chronological reading plan that I'm on and it has a devotion that goes with it. Um, of course there's other things based off of maybe, uh, particular issues you're dealing with. Maybe you have an anger problem and there's a reading plan that talks through, you know, anger, but like what the Bible says, how to deal with anger. Right. Um, or maybe you need joy. And then there's a whole, there's a whole series and reading plans on what to do with joy. And it takes you to the Bible and really helps you to study the Bible. Right. So I want to encourage you guys, if you don't already have a reading plan, you know, or have any kind of, um, I don't know, regular routine, you need to start somewhere. And I'm, I, I'm just going to be completely honest. I fail daily where I don't take my daily routine. Um, I don't want to say I don't take it seriously, but I do get caught up in like the tasks of things, right? Um, I get caught up in, oh, I wake up and now I've got to pack my kids lunches and I got to do all these things and put dinner in the crock pot. And then I got to get my kids to school and then I get to work and then I've got all these things and I can't even see my desk. And sometimes I'll forget to really take time to look at God's word and study God's word. And sadly, there are times that I probably fit that statistic where I gave God less than 30 minutes a day looking at his word. And I'm just telling you from that as somebody who's being completely transparent. But can I also tell you when I make time for God and I sit down and I say, God, show me something new, I can get lost in his word. And next thing you know, it's been two hours. I'll be sitting in my office desk and it's been two hours and I have just consumed all this stuff. I might've only read three or four chapters, but I'm using all these study materials that I have. I'm using all these different resources that are so easily accessible to us here in America. And I am learning so much and I feel so much better because I feel like I'm even more connected to my God who loves me. 
So I want to give you this challenge. Um, this challenge I have done with students multiple times. It's called the one month challenge. Um, today that I'm recording this is actually November 1st. The day you're viewing it probably isn't going to be November 1st. But I want to encourage you um, for one month, take your Bible with you everywhere. Um, it could be... Um, like a smaller Bible, because I know, like, honestly, if I was to, like, lug this around, it's a, this is a huge Bible. So if I was to lug this around, this would be really hard. But, you know, take your Bible somewhere and, like, have it visible everywhere you go. And I mean everywhere. We've done this before, and we've take, I've taken it to Taco Bell. I've taken it to the schools. Um, of course, I, I'm not pushing it in the schools as an adult. Please understand that. But like, I'll have it, you know, when I'm substitute teaching, I'll just have it out on the table where I'm reading. Um, and I'll read it in my free time on my planning period and so forth. Um, but take it with you to Walmart, take it with you wherever you go and let people see it. And then this might open the door to ask some questions. Also, so something I give as advice to teenagers when they are struggling with a sinful lifestyle, especially a sin that they can do behind closed doors, like maybe look at inappropriate images or so forth, I encourage them, have God's word like right beside them. Like I'm, I'm telling you, there is something about having the Bible right there on your nightstand or right there on your bed or right there wherever you're at that's going to deter you. It's almost as if God's speaking to you, even though, yes, we know it's God's living word. It's, it's alive and active, but... It's one of those things where I'm like, have God's word invisible because I can tell you it's probably going to be a lot harder to look at those inappropriate images if you got God's word staring at your face. Just saying. I did have a teenager tell me just the other day that they <laughs> took their Bible to school and um, they were having a math test and they literally took their Bible out and they put their Bible <laughs> out like and opened it and was reading some scriptures before the math test. And the teacher comes by who, uh, I love the teacher, he comes by and he goes, that's not going to save you if you didn't study. And there's truth to that. Like you got to put effort into things, right? But it's such a nice thing to know that you can have God's word and you can have that comfort and that security to know that, you know, God speaking to us, God can teach us, God can, can help us grow. And going back to that second Timothy, the verse. It's used to equip us, his sons and daughters, to do the good works that he's got planned for us, right? So I want to encourage you, if you're a believer that's been a believer since you were five years old and you're 85 years old, still get into God's word, right? If you're a new believer and you just accepted Jesus Christ and, and you're, you're not really sure about this whole thing, you know, find you a Bible version, like translation that you feel is easy to read. Like I said, NLT is a great version for reading um, the Bible and just start somewhere. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that say, if you're learning about the gospel, start in the book of John. John is a great book to talk about. If you're a first time believer, where to start it's in the New Testament, it's the fourth book in the New Testament. Um, Read the Gospel of John. Um, of course, sometimes if we're believers and we need a slap in the face, go read the book of James. Got some great stuff. Five simple chapters, but it's just really there. Really, really convicting when you got some stuff going on, right? Um, but find your reading plan. Get that Bible version, uh, you version Bible app. Get it out and really and truly get a reading plan. Find something that's going to help you and make it something that's consistent and a part of your life. Thank you for your time. And again, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. And then one of us, the staff, Pastor Daniel, um, or myself, if you tag me in the comment, you know, we'll be happy to reach out to you and connect with you even more and give you the resource. And let me tell you something. If you do not have a Bible, my personal conviction, I will get you a Bible. Just reach out to me. Um, if you're local and I can get it to you, like hand you one, I'll hand you one. Um, if I have to ship you one, I'll ship you one. But to me, every person should have access to a Bible. And it's my job as a minister to make sure God's word is in your hand. Let's pray. Tell your Father, thank you so much for being an amazing God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the fact that you still speak to us today. Today we are so bombarded by so much noise, so much stuff going on through social media and our television sets and you know, we look at all the doom and gloom things happening in our world and sometimes we can lose sight of the fact that you're still trying to speak sweet, peaceful things to us through your scriptures and that you are still trying to be alive and active. Lord God, I pray that we will look at your word and look at it with a 
with a freshness that we've never seen it before if we've been believers for a while. I pray that if we're a new believer, that you will help them to really see God's Word as exciting, that it's not, you know, some just task list. Oh, I've got to read a chapter today, check it off a list. But God, it's something that they desire to do and that they grow and that they learn and that they feel more connected to you in the process. Lord, I pray that we will do our part as your sons and daughters to get to be the best versions of ourselves by learning your word and Lord God using your word not just for the blessings because I think that's so many times what happens God we use your word just for the blessings but we don't use your word for the conviction I pray God that you allow your Holy Spirit to speak to us through your word to convict us of things that we might need to change in our lives to do better God so that we are growing in you so that we can be equipped to do what we need to do to spread your love and to point people to who you are as the Lord and Savior of our lives. God, you're a good God. You're an awesome God. And I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. And again, if this is part of the growth track and you're watching, I pray that this is very informative and that you learned something. Have a great day.